everyone. I am so excited to be here to make uh, chocolate chip pretzel cookies today. Okay, and I actually get to do it twice today, so that means I think four dozen cookies. That's crazy. I'm gonna share with Mr. Sam, because he's here too. Um, so let's see, hi Jenny. Yeah, please introduce yourselves as you're joining, because I'd love to know who's cooking with us today. So my name is Elena. I'm here at the kids' table. Oh, we got Steve, hello. And um, we are making chocolate chip pretzel cookies. So hopefully you guys uh, pulled the recipe off of our website. We always have it there. Um, so you can gather all of your ingredients ahead of time. Um, and we'll, let's see what time it is. We'll wait another couple minutes before we actually start, but we can go ahead and uh, go over the ingredients that we're gonna be using today, all right? So, got my recipe out. Oh, I left my butter in the microwave. Oh, it's on the counter. Mr. Sam took it out. So you're gonna want six tablespoons of melted butter. But lots of times cookies call for softened butter, but we're using melted butter today. Um, so you can melt it in the microwave. Just make sure to use a low power setting. Otherwise your butter will explode in the microwave, which means you lose butter and you have a big mess to clean up. So neither are good. Um, so I did mine at, I did it in three rounds. Like you can see my, my melted butter. I did it in um, two minutes at 20% power. Hello, who's that? Uh, Cullen, awesome. And we got Lila and Jocelyn. Hey guys, I'm Elena, for those of you who are just joining here at the kids' table. Um, and we're making chocolate chip pretzel cookies. So we just started going over our ingredients to make sure you guys have everything out and ready to go. And then once we review our ingredients and our tools, we can go uh, wash our hands. Um, or you can wash your hands right now. I'm gonna wait till I do my review give you guys a moment to gather anything you're missing and I'll wash my hands. I've washed them a bunch of times today already, but can't wash them too much. So melted butter, uh, use a low power when you're melting it in the microwave, like 20%. So I did it for two minutes, 20% power, then another two minutes, 20%, then another minute to get the last bit. So takes a little time, but avoids the butter explosion. It's all happened to you, right? Has it happened to you guys? It happens to me all the time. Okay, six tablespoons melted butter, we have brown sugar. We need a half a cup. We also have, and as you guys join, please tell me, do a little chat in to say who you are so I can say hi, okay? We also have some white sugar. We need two tablespoons of white sugar. And then, let's see, we need an egg. So I have one egg here, so we get to crack an egg today. That's always fun. And we need vanilla, just a uh, teaspoon of vanilla. I got a little little bottle here. And then we need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I've got those right here. You guys can measure them right out of your containers if you want. I just don't want to bring our big our big containers out here. So that's why I put it into bowls. But you can save dishes and measure it right out of your container. Then we need our flours. We use half whole wheat and half all purpose because we always like to bring in some whole grains when we can. Um, and it's three quarters of a cup of each. If you don't have um, whole wheat flour, you can use all all-purpose flour if you'd like. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, we are making chocolate chip pretzel cookies. So our two star ingredients are last, but certainly not least. We have our chocolate chips. We need a half a cup of chocolate chips. And then we have our pretzels. So I got these adorable mini pretzels. Make sure your pretzels are salted because that's what, um, that's what makes this especially delicious is that sweet, salty magic. So I got mini pretzels because we're gonna, we're gonna crush some pretzels to put them in our cookies, but then we're gonna put a little mini pretzel on top of our cookie too. So it's gonna be awesome. All right, so that's our, those are our ingredients. Now, quick review of tools, what we'll need. We need a big mixing bowl, a whisk, and a spoon, because at some point our batter is going to get thick and the whisk won't cut it, so we'll switch. Um, you're going to need a variety of measuring cups and measuring spoons. So like a tablespoon, a quarter teaspoon, a teaspoon, a half a cup, um, and then for the flowers, a quarter cup. And let's see, this is the fun part to crush our pretzels. I'm going to use a Ziploc bag and a rolling pin. So you can use, if you have one of those, um, 
What are those things called, Sam, when you uh, pound the flattened meat? A mallet. A mallet. If you have a mallet, you can use that. Um, I'm going to use a rolling pin because I don't have a mallet here. Anything that will um, that you can use to kind of crush the pretzels. Um, and then, of course, we need, uh, we're going to use a tablespoon to uh, scoop out our dough at the end. And then I've got two baking sheets with parchment paper on them um, to keep our cookies from sticking to our baking sheet. All right, I think that about covers it. Uh, so if, make sure you have all your stuff out. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to go wash your hands. And then I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna wash my hands and I will meet you back here in about 25 seconds. favorite is the heart or a little heart if you guys are ready to get started with our chocolate chip pretzel cookies. I'm going to wait for just one. Just one. That's all I want. Just a little love. A little thumbs up or a heart. Sam just gave me a thumbs up. But, but I want one from one of you guys. Right? No? Anyone? Maybe you guys are still getting your ingredients or washing your hands. I'll wait a moment. <gasps> Yes, I got a heart. Thank you. Um, so the other, oh, I got another one. Oh, stop, guys. Um, so the other thing that you want to do is uh, go ahead and preheat your oven. I should have told you that uh, uh, before we got up to wash our hands. Oh, look at all those hearts. You guys are so sweet. Uh, you're making my day. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees, okay? And by the way, feel free to heart me all class long, okay? Like there's no, I'm not going to get sick of seeing them, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our butter. So I measured out the butter um, just from the stick. You know, I just cut six tablespoons of butter and then melted them all. So I know I have exact melted butter here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it right into my mixing bowl. I don't need to measure it because I measured it, you know, with the lines on the stick super convenient. So I'm just going to pour that in right here and I am going to use my wooden spoon just to scrape out. Get as much of that delicious butter out of there as you can. Okay, so I've got my big mixing bowl and I've got my, my melted butter in there and now we need to add our sugars. So if you recall, we're using two sugars. We're using brown sugar and white sugar. So here's a uh, a question for you, pop quiz. You didn't know you were going to be tested, right? It is Wednesday. It's like school. Um, what ingredient do you add to sugar to make brown sugar? While you think about that, I'm going to measure things. You usually just, you don't pack it. You just kind of fill the scoop um, loosely and then level it. With brown sugar, you can pack it down. So I'm packing it down a little bit. Oh no. Oh, whoa. Hopefully you guys are back. My internet, I swear, we need to get some new internet service here. It randomly just decides it wants to disconnect. Hopefully you guys are all still there. It seems like you are. Okay, so I just packed down my brown sugar for a nice, full, packed half cup. And I'm going to add it to my bowl. Does anybody have any answers on the ingredient that you add to sugar to make brown sugar? Anyone at all? I'm going to wait till we do our, our measure out our second sugar and then I'll tell you. Okay, so we've got our butter and our brown sugar now. We need two tablespoons of uh, white sugar. So I've got my white sugar right here. Yes, Laura Lee got it. Molasses. Exactly. So I actually don't even buy brown sugar at home anymore. I just have molasses. And then I have white sugar, and if I want brown sugar, I just make my own and put it in a jar and keep it. Oh, Christine got it too, sweet. 
Um, and that way, you know, when you get a bag of brown sugar, even if you seal it really well, lots of times it ends up getting hard. So you can just make a batch of it, keep it in a jar. Perfect. So white sugar, we're gonna do two tablespoons. We get a nice full scoop, make sure it's all the way full, but then level it off with your finger or with your hand, right? Make it nice and flat, full, but level. So one tablespoon and two. So our second one and level it up. There we go. Okay, so what you should have in your bowl now is six tablespoons of melted butter, half a cup of brown sugar, and two tablespoons of white sugar. And we're gonna whisk it up. Are you guys good? Everybody with me? You have those first three ingredients in your bowl. Okay. Make sure proper whisking technique for, yes, got a thumbs up. Um, for, I'm sure, you know, you adults out there know this, but for the kiddos, very important to remember that when we're stirring, we hold our stirring tool in one hand, usually the hand we write with or color with, and we hold the bowl in the other to keep it steady, right? Because that keeps the, if the bowl starts spinning around, nothing gets mixed, okay? And our bowl can end up on the floor. And if my cookie batter ended up on the floor, I would be really bummed, and so would Mr. Sam. And Mr. Sam's roommate, right? And my son, Jake. All these people are gonna be enjoying the cookies that we're making today. Okay. So, butter, brown sugar, sugar in the bowl. Now we're gonna crack our egg. So egg cracking is very fun. Uh, what this means though is that once our egg goes into our batter, we wanna not be licking our batter. We don't wanna be licking our bowl, licking our spoon, putting our hands in our mouth because as most of you probably know, raw egg can make you sick. Okay, it may not, but it may. So we wanna be very safe and just not eat our batter when it has raw egg in it. Plus, if we eat our batter, we have fewer cookies. So this is what we're gonna do. We have an egg. I'm gonna show you proper egg cracking technique. So you're gonna hold your egg firmly in the hand that you write with, color with, and make sure to leave the bottom part exposed. So don't grip it like that, okay? Because then you can't crack the egg because your fingers are in the way. So hold it like this. I put my thumb on the side and my index finger on the top and my other fingers on the side. Leave this part open. And then we're gonna tap it firmly, okay? But we're not smashing it, okay? We're doing a firm tap to crack it. Okay, we don't wanna break it open. We just wanna crack it. Oh, mine didn't crack enough with that one, so I'm gonna do it again. There we go. So now I have a crack and then I'm gonna take my thumb tips, the tips of my thumbs, and I'm gonna open it up. So I'm not gonna smash the eggshell in. I'm gonna kind of open the egg like it's like a door. Whoop! Oh, I almost broke my shell into my, actually, let me show you guys a fun trick. Oh no, I got shell in my batter. Don't worry, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our half of an egg shell that we have and we're just going to use it like a little scoop and reach in and get that little shell right out no problem okay so no big deal if you end up with a little shell you just pick it out with the eggshell so you put your eggshell in, in a little garbage bowl here and now if you're like me you probably got egg on your hands so i'm going to go wash my hands again i don't have any egg on my table if you guys got egg on your table, you can give it a quick wipe. Um, I'm just going to go wash my hands. Be right back. Right. Are you guys good? Do you have our first four ingredients in your bowl? And do you have clean hands? And have you taken any bits of eggshell that might have fallen in out of your bowl? Are we good to go? We're ready for our next one. 
I'm gonna give my mine a little stir to get that that egg all mixed in. All right, I got some thumbs up. I like to know everybody's with me, you know, because I don't want to leave you guys behind. I mean, obviously, you know, you can always chat in. If you miss something, you need me to say something again, or you need me to slow down, you can always do that. And Mr. Sam on Monday started this really cool thing that we're going to do every time is a little Q and A at the end. So if you've got questions um, that you want to ask, you can save them all up. Um, if, you, if it's immediate, ask it right away. But you know, if you've got kind of non-pressing questions, we can chat about it at the end while we wait for our cookies to bake. Okay. So my batter is looking pretty good. I'm gonna show you what mine looks like. So good. I wanna eat it, but I'm not going to because of the raw egg, all right? So don't do it. Okay, now we're gonna add our vanilla. I've got my little bottle, squeeze bottle of vanilla, and we need one teaspoon. So I have a teaspoon measure, and I'm gonna just fill my teaspoon measure all the way up. And we dump it in. Okay, so we have vanilla. Now, the next ingredient is salt and baking soda. So we need a quarter teaspoon of each. So there's gonna be a bit of salt in these cookies between the salt we're adding now and the salted pretzels we'll be adding. So we're doing the extra salt because we really want a pronounced we actually want to taste the salt in these cookies. Lots of times when you add salt to cookies or other baked goods, you actually don't want to taste the salt. You're adding just a little bit to bring out the sweetness and the flavor of the other ingredients. But in this cookie, we're actually going for that sweet, that very obvious like sweet and savory um, flavor combination. That's what makes it so good. It's the same reason like salted caramel is really good. Yum. So, Baking soda is, we're only adding a quarter teaspoon. This is what's gonna give our cookies just a little bit of lift, okay? It's gonna make them not fluffy. We don't want it to be like cake, but we do want it to rise just a little bit. So I've got a quarter teaspoon measure, and remember to level. Use your finger to level it off, and always level it over your ingredient bowl, not over your mixing bowl, because then it all ends up in, in your mixing bowl. I mean, you know, the, the bowl that you're taking it from, measure it over that, level it over there. Perfect. I'm gonna dump that in. Now I'm gonna get my salt, do the same thing. Big scoop, level it off, dump it in. All right, now we've got melted butter, brown sugar, white sugar, egg, vanilla, salt, and baking soda all in the bowl. I'm gonna give it one more stir and I'm gonna smell my batter because that vanilla is, I think, gonna make our batter smell really, really good, the vanilla extract. Ooh, that smells delicious. Again, I'm not gonna taste it, but it smells really good and I cannot wait to eat these cookies. Okay. Now we're gonna add our flours. So this is what's gonna bulk up our dough. So as I mentioned, I have um, white and whole wheat flour. The one thing we wanna do before we add the flour is this is when we're gonna switch our mixing tools from our whisk to our wooden spoon. So before adding the flour, you can kind of tap off your whisk to get as much of that delicious batter off as you can. And then you can just put it off to the side. I have a little bus pan down here that I'm stacking my stuff in. So put that off to the side because our flowers are going to make our batter really thick and everything would just get clumped up in the whisk. So a spoon works much better. <clears throat> so if you are using white and whole wheat flour like we like to do, you need three quarters of a cup of each. So I've got my little quarter cup scoop and I'm going to do three of my all-purpose flour and three of my whole wheat flour. And now this, you do not want to pack it down. So if you look at how much that's sticking up over the top, if I packed it down, I could probably fit a lot of it in. Look at this. Do you see how I managed to fit? It was a heaping quarter cup and I just packed it all in. So that's way more than we need. The way dry measurements like flour work, 
is they're assuming that it's a loosely packed cup, not a tightly packed cup. So you're just gonna do a scoop, and then instead of smashing it down, you just wanna level it with your finger, or if your fingers aren't long enough, just use your hand and make it nice and flat, okay? So I'm gonna do three of my white flour. One, two, three. And we're gonna do three of the whole wheat flour. One, two, and three. There we go. Okay, put these off to the side and got my wooden spoon. I'm gonna mix these in. You gotta really use your stirring muscles here. Remember to be holding your bowl very securely with your other hand while you stir. So it takes a few minutes, but slowly all that flour that you added will get absorbed by your wet ingredients and you'll start to see your dough forming. So this is a pretty, it's on the drier side for cookie doughs. Here we go, look at what mine looks like. So it's, it's I mean, I guess it's, it's not totally, you know, but it's not going to, um, you're gonna be able to handle it with your hands. Lots, sometimes cookie dough is wet enough that you, if you touch it, you would get it all over your hands. This is, um, kind of a nice in between. It's almost like it's got a Play-Doh feel to it, okay? Now remember, don't eat it, that egg. All right, so once your uh, flour basically like disappears into your batter, you can't see the flour at all anymore because it's completely incorporated like that, then you know you're good. So now we're gonna fold in our mix-ins. Okay, so this is like a base, a basic cookie dough recipe. So you could bake these up, sprinkle some cinnamon sugar on it if you wanted, as is. You could just do chocolate chips. You could do chocolate chips and oats, right? We're doing chocolate chips and crushed pretzels. So I've got my chocolate chips here. Are you guys all ready to add your mix in? Do you have your dough done with all your ingredients, all mixed up, can't see any more flour in there? Are you guys ready to, for this kind of like our final step of adding our mix-ins in? Let me know, because I don't want to leave anyone behind. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy, Laura Lee, that you guys are enjoying. Are you guys ready to put the chocolate chips in? I'll tell you what, while I wait to hear from you, I'm going to taste one of my chocolate chips. So we can't taste our batter, but we can taste our mix-ins. I'm going to take a chocolate chip. Very excited. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips. Oh, great. Bill's ready. I'm going to just pop it in my mouth. I'm not going to touch my mouth. I don't want to wash my hands again. Mmm. Delicious. So tasty. I won't taste the pretzels yet. I'll save that. We're going to do a half a cup of chocolate chips. Okay? So dig your... I've got a half cup of all, so I just kind of pushed off any chocolate chips that were sticking them over the top. And add this in. Okay, I guess I could fold them in now a little bit, or we could wait to add our pretzels. I'll give it a Oh, there went that Wi-Fi again. I'll tell you, call AT&T, take care of this. So I just folded our, I didn't say anything because I knew it was paused, so you didn't miss anything. Okay, so this is our batter with our chocolate chips. So now we basically have chocolate chip cookies, but we want to make chocolate chip pretzel cookies. So, this is where it gets really fun. I've got a Ziploc bag, and I have my mini pretzels, and we need a half a cup of coarsely crushed pretzels. So that means that we don't want powder. 
okay? We want to crush them so that they are in small pieces, okay? So let me see. I mean, you could break them with your finger. It might, it would take a while. So I think the best way is to just crush them with something like a rolling pin. That's what I'm going to use. So I wonder how many mini pretzels I need to make a half a cup of coarsely crushed pretzels. I'll take guesses. I'm going to say... I'm going to guess 40. 40 mini pretzels to make a half a cup of crushed pretzels. You guys, put your guesses in the comments. We'll see who's right. I love these little competitions. You can ask anybody that works at Kids Table. Mr. Sam guessed 22. All right? I'm going to put 40 pretzels just because that's my, oh, mm. I guess we'll know. Mm, how would I do this? I don't know how to figure out who wins. Three fourths, Laura Lee, do you mean like 40 pretzels would make three fourths of a cup? They're all three fourths when they break them up. Hmm? So three uh, three fourths of a cup of pretzels would make whole pretzels. Oh, measure out three quarters of a cup of whole pretzels. Yes. Interesting. That's what Sam thinks you mean. I love it. Okay, so five. That's five pretzels. This is 10. I might have done overkill with my guess of 40. I'm usually really good at this. 10, 15, 20, 25. Mm. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush 25 and we're gonna see where we're at. So Mr. Sam might have been closer than me. Okay, so seal it up in your bag and then you take your rolling pin and you're gent just gently gonna smash it because remember we don't want powder we want them coarsely crushed this is like the best like how often do you get to smash things and it's like allowed and encouraged very fun So make sure you're watching what you're doing so you can kind of smash the bigger bits that are still there. Okay, I've just got a few big ones and I'm gonna show you what mine look like. So you see how they're not, I mean, obviously there's a little bit of powder in there, but there's also some bigger pieces. Okay, so that's what you're going for. All right, I feel like this might fill my, my half cup. I feel like I didn't, get, I didn't get a win on that one. I'm a, little, I'm a little sad, but that's okay. We can't be right all the time, right? I can accept defeat and offer Sam the victory. I'm happy to do that, actually. Maybe Sam needed a win today. Okay, so look at that. I would say, honestly, Sam was pretty spot on because I put 25 mini pretzels in here and there is uh, possibly three pretzels worth left in here. And he guessed 22. All right. So I've got my half cup of crushed pretzels right here, coarsely crushed, and I'm gonna add them to my batter. Okay, I made a little bit of a mess. By the way, it is good to use, you don't need a freezer bag this big, but a freezer bag is better than a Ziploc sandwich bag because um, the plastic is a little thicker. If you use a sandwich bag, the pokey parts of the pretzel as you crush them up might break the bag and then you could end up with pretzel dust everywhere. Worst things have happened, but you know, minimizing the mess is helpful. Okay, look at that. I'm gonna fold these crushed pretzels into our batter and then we, thumbs up, yes. You guys are with me, I love it. So we just wanna kinda make sure the chocolate chips and the pretzels are evenly distributed through the batter so that you get a little bit of both in every cookie. Okay. So, I think 
these look great. I was gonna use a tablespoon to measure, but I think I'm just gonna use my hands. So get out your uh, parchment covered baking sheet. If you have one of those silicone uh, sheets for baking cookies, you can use that too. And if you do use parchment, you can do this cool thing that Mr. Sam did for me, which was fold the parchment under. Um, and that way you don't have scrap parchment paper coming up on the sides that can um, catch on fire, you know, with, from your heating element in your oven. We've caught our fair share of parchment paper on fire here at the kids' table. I don't recommend it. Okay, so I've got, I cleaned the batter off the spoon. So I'm just gonna use my hands to make, so this recipe says it makes two dozen cookies, but basically you can make cookies whatever size you want. You know, if you make them a little bit bigger, then um, can you use foil? That's a good question. Oh, you know, I think that you can, would you put it shiny side up or shiny side down? It really doesn't matter, but you would, you would want to do shiny side down. Okay, Mr. Sam suggested doing shiny side down on the foil and you could always give it a very, very light spray. Um, with non-stick spray just to make sure because you don't want if the cookies stick to the foil then you as you try to pull them off you get the little bits of foil stuck to it you know it's not the end of the world but then you got to sit there and like pick it off so i would do foil and then just a touch of uh non-stick spray on top so this is what our batter looks like it looks so good so um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make two dozen cookies. What you can do if you want to um, do less guesswork is you can actually take your dough out and kind of divide it instead of just pulling part uh, little bits off. Um, you can kind of divide it. You could use a chopper or a butter knife and kind of cut it into pieces. So if I cut it in half, then I know that each half of dough is going to be a dozen cookies, right? So then I can separate it. Don't handle your dough too much because it is, you know, uh, greasy. And remember, raw egg, don't eat it. I know. It smells so good. So then if we cut it in half again, then each of these halves is going to make six cookies, right? This is like math. Oh, you're so welcome, Colin. Okay, so this is gonna be six cookies. So I think if I cut it in half one more time, then I can just break this into three, right? So now I have a ball that I know should be three cookies. Though I wonder if I wanna make mine, I might just divide it into two because I wanna be able to fit a little mini pretzel in each cookie. So I might end up making 18 cookies instead of 24. So you're gonna do a ball of cookie dough and you want them to be about the same size so they cook at about the same rate. Okay, so you check it out. Okay, so these are about mm, a little over an inch in diameter. So you can just start by setting them, setting the balls of cookie dough. Um, ultimately, we're going to flatten them, but we can do that at the end. So, there we go. And you want them to be about two inches apart because they, do, they will spread. That's why I have two baking sheets. So again, instead of making six cookies with each of these halves, I'm making four. So I'm going to cut it in half again, and then cut it in half. I wonder if my math is right that I'm making 18 cookies. Maybe I'm just making 16 cookies. So it's four, four, four. Yeah, I'm making 16 cookies. And if you want to make a nice ball, you can roll it between your palms like this. Okay. I wonder if I can fit all 16 of my cookies on one baking sheet. Maybe. 
don't really want them to bake together though. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do two baking sheets because you see they're pretty close together. I think they're too close together and I'm only halfway done with my dough. So I'm gonna spread them out. This way I'm sure that they don't bake together. They'd still be delicious, but they won't be as pretty. Okay, so before I go on to my second baking sheet, I wanna show you guys what you're gonna do. You're gonna very gently press, flatten your dough balls with your fingers, okay? And then we are gonna take a pretzel. Oh, we didn't taste our pretzels. Okay. We'll do that after, because right now I have eggy cookie dough fingers, but I'm gonna taste my pretzels. Um, I'm actually not gonna dip my eggy cookie dough fingers into my bowl of pretzels, and I'm gonna taste my pretzels after my cookies are in the oven and I wash my hands. So this is a really fun part. You're gonna take your adorable little mini pretzel and press it in gently into the top of your cookie dough. So I'm glad I made mine a little bit bigger because if I had made them smaller, I wouldn't have had as much room for my pretzel. I'm gonna show you guys what these look like. Check it out. Isn't that cute? So cute. Okay, so this is half cookie dough. And I'm trying to clean up my, get a bit of a mess here. Here's my other half. I'm gonna do a little switcheroo on my baking sheets. Okay, so this is the other half of my dough and I've got my chopper. You can totally use a butter knife and I'm just gonna use this to help me make pieces of dough that are about the same size. So I'm gonna divide each of these into four. I'll cut it in half again, and then I'll cut it in half one more time. And again, it doesn't need to be exact, so we just want it to be a good estimate. Okay, and then I can take this and we're gonna roll it, roll it into a ball, and arrange it, again, space them about two inches apart. And then we're gonna go back and flatten them gently. This one looks a little smaller than this one. I'm gonna take, take a little bit of dough from that one. Oh, thanks guys, I'm so glad you're having such a good time. What a fun way to spend a Wednesday morning, right? Oh, sure, you wanna know how to place the pretzels? Absolutely. So what you're gonna do is, here, I'll do it with these, these four. You are going to gently flatten the, uh, the cookie dough, your ball of cookie dough. So you make it into a ball like this, but then you gently flatten it with your fingertips, or you could use your, the palm of your hand. Not too flat, just gently flatten it, and then, you take your pretzel and put the mini pretzel right in the top. You just gently press it in, just so it sticks. As the cookie bakes, the pretzel will sink a little bit more and get nice and embedded in the cookie. So you don't want it to disappear into the cookie. You just, here, let me show you. You just wanna gently press it in, but see, it won't fall off either. Does that make sense? All right, so I've got four more cookies to make. Let me see, somebody asked a question that I think I missed. How long does it take? Kate, hey Kate, so nice to see you. Um, how long does it take what? How long does it take to bake? or to make the dough. It bakes for about um, probably eight or nine minutes, would be my guess. Let's see what our recipe says. It says eight to 10 minutes. Yeah, 
So we'll I'm going to set my timer for eight, and this is at 350, and then I'll check it. And um, if I think it needs a little bit longer, I'll add another minute or two, depending on how they look. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, I am down to my last two dough balls. Okay, nice round. Oh, I didn't spread them out as much as I could have. There we go, perfect. And again, gently press it down. Boop. And I'm going to press my pretzel in. I need a couple more. Whoop. Okay. Oh my. Oh my. All right, guys. Mr. Sam's taking them to the oven. Eight minutes. Set a time for eight minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash my hands. And I'm going to get a, a rag with a little cleaner on it to clean my table because my egg, my raw egg cookie dough is on here, right? So I'll be right back. I'll meet you guys back here, and while our cookies bake, if you have any questions about anything we did in class today, um, bring them, and I'm happy to answer it. And I can also tell you about the other stuff we have going on, because it's a lot. I'm really excited. And I'm going to taste my pretzel. So I will be right back. So good. A little dry. Mm -hmm. Salty, crunchy. I'm very excited. Well, while you think about your questions, I'm going to tell you what we have coming up. So, we are doing these classes on Facebook Live twice a week. We just started a 4 o'clock class on Mondays. And the theme is like meatless Mondays. That's really fun. Mr. Sam made uh, mac and trees on Monday. And uh, I haven't saved the video to our timeline yet, but I will do that today if you guys missed it and want to check it out. <clears throat> and next Monday, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Black bean sweet potato quesadillas. Yum. It's so good. So good. Um, so hopefully you can check that out. So these classes are free. We've got a uh, pay what you can link to PayPal. So if you are able to contribute, uh, that would be great because um, we're closed right now. So we're kind of doing these classes virtually, which has been really fun. We've been wanting to do virtual classes for ages and what an opportunity we have now to do them. Uh, so uh, and then next Wednesday we're making, will you look it up for me, Mr. Sam, on our website? I forgot. He knows it, he knows it, but he forgot. He's gonna tell us what we're making next Wednesday. So the Monday at four o'clock is always like a meatless Monday, savory kind of dinner items. That can be like your family dinner. And Wednesday is always baking. That's what we're doing right now. Oh, he's finding it. And then we just started Zoom classes. So these are similar to Facebook Live, but also very different because everybody's on camera. So these are fee-based classes. You can brownies. sign up. Oh, next Wednesday, we're making brownie Sundays on Facebook Live. 
So the Zoom classes, uh, you guys, I can see you. I can see participants and you get to, you know, and so we're interacting more directly and the participants can talk to each other. It's super fun. Um, oh, you're so welcome, Gina. Oh, your cookies look so good. Yay. I haven't seen my, I still have four minutes left on my timer. Um, so yeah, so the Zoom ones are really fun. We've got a really cool spring into spring theme for those we're making. Um, creamy pasta with mushrooms and peas this week, and uh, strawberry rhubarb cinnamon rolls next week. So, really fun. And uh, those are on Fridays. We have a top class at 10 and a kids class at 11.30, but we're gonna be adding more of those, so definitely check out our website. Um, Laura Lee, so you wanna know where to post photos. Yes, I love it. So I believe that you can, and maybe Mr. Sam is a little hipper and cooler than I am, but I think you can just comment on our on our video and in your comment you can like upload a photo you have the ability to add photos to your comments so that would be great if you don't mind doing that because then we'll get to see it too of course you can always just post the photo on your page oh awesome and uh and tag us as well but sometimes we can't see those if people's pages are private and stuff so great I have three minutes left on my timer. How are you guys doing? Are anybody's cookies out of the oven yet? Am I behind? Did I fall behind in my own class somehow? Maybe. So the other cool thing that uh, we're doing are private cooking parties. So if you people want to celebrate a birthday or want to have, you know, a girl or a boy scout troop party or a family gathering virtually, you know, or a classroom end of the year party, we can set up a private Zoom cooking class or party just for you guys. So we're doing a lot of really fun stuff. So however you want to see us, whether it's here or um, in any other, you know, on Zoom or whatever, um, we love cooking with you. So we hope you'll keep coming back and tell everyone you know, okay? Like they don't have to be in Chicago. We're getting to cook with people all over the country now, which again is really exciting. Two minutes. Two minutes, guys. Doesn't this seem like it's taking so long? Does anybody have their cookies ready? Make sure to let your cookies cool, by the way. So how, are, how do you know if your cookies are done yet? So this is a very good question. What you are looking for is the cookies won't be shiny anymore, okay? So they'll look like that. We don't want them to look dry and cracked, like dry, but they're not going to be shiny. They're going to lose that shine. And then the very edges of the cookie will start to be just a little bit brown, like barely. Okay, because I like cookies with a little chewiness to them as opposed to like crispy cookies. That's me. And remember that your cookies are gonna be softer when they come out of the oven, but then as they cool, they're gonna firm up a little bit. So you actually want to take them out of the oven a little bit softer um, than you want them to ultimately be. Hopefully that makes sense. I think you know what I'm saying. Mr. Sam is checking our cookies right now. Are they, are they okay? Yeah. Are they almost done? Oh, he's so hungry. Mr. Sam is so hungry. I think he's more excited than I am for these cookies to come out of the oven. So once your cookies do come out of the oven, of course you want to eat them right away, but don't do that because they're going to be insanely hot. Okay. So what I like to do, what we do here at the kids table, and this is great if you have it on parchment or foil or whatever, you can slide your cookies off your hot baking sheet and put them on a cool counter. And that will help them cool down a little bit faster. And then probably if you wait about two minutes or so, if the cookie's on a cool counter, you can break it open and see, check to see if it's cool enough to eat. So Mr. Sam is pulling. Are they ready? Yes, I'm gonna get Okay, and then, and then we'll say our goodbyes. But I wanna show you what ours look like so you can see.
Wow, guys. Look. Aren't they beautiful? I'm so excited. I hope your cookies turn out amazing. Remember to let them cool before tasting them. Um, thank you so much for being here and participating and for the photos that you're posting. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great rest of your day.